All right, three different views of a three-dimensional figure constructed from cubes are shown. Which of the following figures could these uh, views represent? All right, so your front view is four by four. So you have to have four by four. So you're just going four across, two up. So four across, two up. Four across, two up. So this one doesn't work because you only have three across, so you'd have to have, if you wanted it to work, would have to have something like this. So that doesn't work. Okay, so we know that one's not right. <clears throat> then we go to our right side, which means I have to have two in the back and one on the bottom. So I got two in the back, one on the bottom, so that's going to work. Two in the back, one on the bottom. And then this one has this guy right here, because that would look like this on the right side. So we know that one doesn't work. And then our top view says we have to have uh, two going across each way. So you got two going each way, and then this one, if you were to draw that as um, a top view, it would look something like this. Okay, right, so that one doesn't work. So that means G is our answer. All right, in which diagram do angle one and angle two appear to be vertical angles? So remember, vertical angles are just angles when two lines intersect that are directly across from each other that are equal. Uh, so these aren't across, these ones aren't across, these are not across, so these are the only ones that are across. Uh, in this case, angle one and angle two would be supplementary angles. These would be supplementary, these would be complementary. These would also be adjacent, adjacent, and adjacent. All right, which group of three lengths could form a right triangle? So remember, we can use our Pythagorean theorem, which is a squared plus b squared equals c squared. Uh, your c is your hypotenuse, which is your biggest. Uh, so we'll just go ahead and start. So 5 squared plus 12 squared equals 13 squared. So that's 25 plus 144 equals 169. Uh, so add those together. And if they equal each other, then we work. So that one is good. So we can go ahead and just stop there. All right, which pair of angles is supplementary? Uh, remember, supplementary means you can add the two angles together and you get 180 degrees. Uh, so you add these two together, that's going to give you 90, so that doesn't work. That gives you 100. Uh, this one gives you 180, so that'll work. And this one, oops, that does not give you 180. That one gives you 190. because 125 plus 65 is 190. Ah, I just circled in here, sorry. All right, sorry. So D is our answer, 40 plus 140. All right, Mr. Malone plans to construct a walkway through his rectangular garden as shown in the diagram. Which is closest to the value of W? So W is just this line right here. Uh, this is a rectangular garden, so you know that this is a right angle. Therefore, uh, we can use the Pythagorean theorem. So since this side, since it's a right rectangle, these two sides are equal. So this is 10 feet. They told us that was 11. So if this is directly across from my right angle, that means it's my hypotenuse. So I can go 11 squared plus 10 squared equals uh, C squared. So this is 121 plus 100 equals C squared. So 221 equals c squared. The opposite of a square is a square root. So if I just go square root of 221, I'm going to get 14.866. And they just looks like they rounded it. So we're just going to say uh, that 8 makes that 4 go up. So it is about 15 feet. And we should have known they rounded it because it said which is closest. All right, a three-dimensional figure is constructed from the identical cubes. Uh, three views of the figure are shown. Which of the following could be used uh, for a three-dimension figure? All right, so let's start with the shaded one because they show you some shaded things here, so that should make it easy. Um, so they just got one, two, three shaded. So that would just look like this. So that's not right. This would be four shaded. One, two, three, four. 
Uh, but they have a little notch up here, so that's not right. And then this one looks like you got three across and one up here. So that one right because you're missing one. And then we got four across and then one little guy coming up. So for that one, all we had to do was uh, look at our front view. All right, three triangles are drawn in rectangular or rectangle PQRS. Which of the following segments is a hypotenuse of one of these triangles? Uh, so this would be a hypotenuse. This would be a hypotenuse. And we wouldn't know what the hypotenuse of uh, this triangle is because they didn't give us a right angle. So RS, not one. RQ, nope. XS, yep. Uh, and then XQ, no. All right, so XS would be one of our hypotenuse. All right, what are the new coordinates of point B after triangle ABC is translated two units down and three units left? So if I just go two down, one, two, three units left, one, two, three, I'm going to be right here. So remember, you always go uh, the X first, so one, two, three, right. So that's positive three, one up, so it's going to be three, one. Uh, also remember, you could have just gone, so it says 6, 3 is our original coordinates. If I'm going 2 units down, that means I'm going minus 2 over here. And then 3 units left, that means I'm going minus 3 here. So that would be a 3, comma 1, just like we said. Alright, uh, the radius of the base of a cone is 4 inches. The slant height of the cone is 6 inches which is closest to the surface area of the cone. So remember surface area equals pi times radius times slant height plus pi r squared. So let's go ahead and plug in what we know. So pi times 4 uh, times 6 plus pi times 4 squared. So let's simplify some of this. So it's going to end up being 24 pi plus 16 pi. Uh, and then we can just combine like terms here. So we're going to end up getting 40 pi. And we can bring up our calculator. Remember, we use uh, 3.14 for pi. So we're going 40 times 3.14, uh, 125.6. And they just rounded it. Because remember, we said closest. Uh, this says which of the following equations is represented by the figure. Uh, so this is a right triangle because you have a right angle. Uh, so you have four units across, three units across, and five units across. So this is your hypotenuse. So this is really just saying three squared plus four squared equals five squared. So that would be right there. All right, which of the following graphs shows a dilation of the triangle from a fixed point? So remember, dilations make things bigger or smaller. Uh, so that's the same size, same size, same size, and this one got bigger. All right, the circle graph displays the number of hours Meredith spent on various activities in a day. Based on the data in the graph, what percent of Meredith's day was spent on activities other than sleeping and eating? So here's sleeping. Here's sleeping. Here's eating. All right, so we can figure out this. And so sleeping and eating is 12 hours. Uh, but all together, so we have 12, 15, 16, 17, 18, uh, 24. So 24 hours total. Uh, and we spent 12 hours doing those two things. Uh, so right away, we should know that it's 50, but we can figure that out. Uh, we could go x over, oops, we can go in part over a whole equals percent over 100. So if we didn't know that that was 50, we would just go 12 over 24 equals x over 100. So that'd be 24x equals 1,200 divided by 24. So x would equal 50. So that'd be 50%. All right, the graph shows the number of slices of pizza sold uh, each day during one week in the school cafeteria. Each slice costs uh, 50 cents. What is the total amount of money the school cafeteria collect on sales of pizza uh, for this week? So each one of these represents 10 slices. So on Monday we had 20, Tuesday we had 20, 
Uh, Wednesday 10, Thursday we had 50, and Friday we had 50. So all together we sold, let's see, 4, 5, 10, 150 slices. Uh, and if it costs 50 cents per slice, you're going 150 times 0 0.5. Uh, so that's going to be seventy-five dollars. Right, a fair cube used in a game has one yellow side and five green sides. Emily will win the game if the cube lands on green, a green side, on her next roll. Which statement best describes Emily's chances of winning? So she has a five and six chance. Uh, so she certainly will win. Would mean a hundred percent. She certainly will lose 100%. Most likely will win is uh, 75 plus percent. And most likely will lose is 75 plus percent. So there's a good chance she's going to win. So we can get rid of these lost ones. Now, since there's one yellow, there's a chance she will lose. Uh, so we can't say she certainly will win. So she will most likely win. All right. This one says, these box and whisker plots summarize the height of boys and the height of girls in 8th grade. Based on the data in the box and whisker plots, which statement is true? So the tallest student in the class is a girl. So, this is, so your uh, upper extreme represents your highest one. Uh, so in this case, your, there's your tallest girl, there's your tallest boy. So your tallest is a girl. So that's probably right, but let's go through the other ones. It says the shortest student is a boy. Here's your shortest student. Here's your shortest girl. So that's not true. The range of boys' height is greater than the range of girls' height. So this would be 68 minus 60. So the range of boys is 8. And the range of girls would be 69 minus 55. And that would equal uh, 14. So that's not true because 14 is bigger than 8. And the median height of girls is greater than the median height of boys. Here's your median, right in the middle, and there's median of boys, so that's not true. So, your tallest student in the class is a girl. Alright, this says the matrix shows the grades on three weeks, our three weekly quizzes for Eric, Sam, and Kurt. What is the element at row two, column three? Uh, so remember, rows go across, columns go up and down. So, here's row two, here's column three, so it would be eight. 